everybody. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video on obtaining previous week values in Power BI. And since then, I've gotten a number of questions related to time intelligence and particularly related to week values. And that's not surprising because weeks are really the, the most poorly behaved granularity in the time intelligence sphere. And if we take a look, I've kind of kind of labeled weeks as the, the juvenile delinquent of time intelligence. And the reason for that is is primarily because in the case of month, you've always got 12 months in a year. In the case of quarters, you've always got four quarters in a year. Weeks are different, though, that because there are seven days in a week and 52 weeks in a year, that's 364 days. So you've got that extra day hanging out there. And in leap years, you've got two extra days. And so that actually ends up in some years based on the numbering scheme for the ISO week number, causing a year to have sometimes 52 weeks, sometimes 53 weeks. And even more than that, um, in some cases where you've got 53 weeks, like in 2020, the 53rd week is at the end of the year, whereas in 2021, that 53rd week is at the beginning. And so week 53, if, if weeks are the juvenile delinquent, week 53 is the hardened criminal of that, of that group. That's the one that's going to cause by far the most problems. And the, the specific issue that I got um, this time asked a couple of times was how if we've got a, a matrix here, and this, this is dealing with a, a data set of oil spot prices. Um, so it's a really, really simple data model. It's just our extended date table connected to a fact table on average weekly spot price. And so in this case, what I'm doing is I'm using total spot price. Um, average works as well, just as well. Um, this technique will work on, on really any aggregation, but totals are sometimes just easier to visualize and talk about. So I just use total here. Um, and what the... The questioners in this case wanted to do was for each of the years they wanted to show a line for week 53 whether or not there was a week 53 in that year or not so you can see in 2018 and 19 there is no week 53 um, in 2020 there it there is um, so what they wanted to do was have it consistent so that that 53rd line would be in each year but then the uh, the metric would be blank for the years in which there wasn't a 53rd year. And if we look here, you know, one of the, the common ways we, we do that is show items with no data, make sure that's turned on. And it, in this case, it's turned on in both. Um, and it's not going to help us because that works when you've actually got a physical row, but just no data associated with that row. In this case, we don't even have the row. And so that's not going to work. And techniques like using all or remove filters aren't going to work because there's nothing to remove that filter on. That, that, that row just doesn't exist. And so the question is, how do we insert that row into each year in which it doesn't exist? And that really becomes a DAX problem, not a DAX problem, but a, a data modeling problem. And if we look... If we look up here, um, one of the things we potentially can do is go to a snowflake scheme where we filter this dates table um, by something that will force that that 53rd week into into our visual in each in each year. And the function that really kind of jumps to mind for that as I was working through this problem is cross join. And the reason cross-join is, is such a good fit for this is cross-join is used to mash two fields together that may or may not have a relationship. That um, They don't have to have a relationship, unlike um, most of your, your summarize or summarize columns um, or other table functions. So in, in the case of cross-join, what it does is just takes two columns and creates every combination of those those two columns whether that exists in the data set or not and that's exactly what we want so what we've got here is is the dax for that and we've got we've got our 
values to create a table out of the column because cross join takes two tables and then values on the ISO week number and we just mash those together and what that's going to do is it's going to give us for each year it's going to give us 53 weeks and then what we what I'm doing here is actually adding a third column to the um, to the table and we could do this in Power Query and probably should do it in Power Query it's just easier to show you the logic in DAX um, so what we're doing here is we're actually taking and concatenating the year with a hyphen and then the week number so that we've got a, a key field to join it to the the dates table but we have to do a little more work here because the way that key field works in the in the dates table is it's a four digit year hyphen and then a two digit week and so in cases where the ISO week number is two digits we can just do the simple concatenation in cases where it's one digit we need to take the the year number and then concatenate that with a hyphen and then a leading zero and then the week number so once we've got that what we can do is we can take that table in the data model and we can find our week and year column so week and year and then we've got this at year week that we just created through the the concatenation and if we if we join those in a one-to-many relationship and just if we check this by just highlighting the the relationship and we can see if we go to the top if we've got and I always like to turn this this option on pin related fields the top of card so that when we check it we can see okay that that at year week matches to week and year which is exactly what we want so now if we go back to the go back to the visual and what we've got to do is we've got to change the the rows um, since what we want is instead of year and week number we want to take this out and use the the um, the year and week number from the cross join table so if we do that and then we take out ISO week number and put in the ISO week number from that that calculated table we still have the same the same total spot price and the same uh, totals for the annual but now if we if we pop this open and expand on all what we'll see is now we've got that 53rd week in 2018 with a blank and the 53rd week in 2019 with a blank and then 2020 we've got it with an actual number since that that has a 53rd week and so that's pretty good that's we, we could stop there um, except for the fact that what we've done is we've now moved out of the star schema model and going back to the best practices and if you watched Greg's excellent um, YouTube videos Greg Phillips uh, enterprise DNA expert his YouTube videos or his um, platform course on best practices you know that moving anytime you move away from the star schema in power bi you're moving outside the realm of what's generally considered a best practice and so for snowflake schemas that it's not a it's not a huge violation and there are cases where you may definitely want to use it but if you can if you can avoid it because you can see right here it does reduce duplication but not necessarily size and it lets you use straight count measures but there's performance issues potentially usability issues definitely increasing the DAX complexity it prevents you from building hierarchies across tables and probably most problematic is that it can really mess up your ability to sync slicers um, across different fields so while this solves the problem it does so in a way that isn't great um, 
So let's let's actually see if we can do better than this. And so let's hop into another table, uh, an another uh, another data model. So here we I've taken a, I've, it's the exact same data, and it is the same data model. So the dates and then the spot price. But this time I've removed the the cross join table. But it does still exist, so it's not connected. But if we look at the DAX, we'll see that it's the exact same DAX that created that that table in the other the other report. So what we can do here is we can actually instead of connecting it in a physical relationship and then violating the star schema and converting that into a snowflake schema, what we can do is maintain the star schema and just use a virtual relationship. And what we can do with that is use a function called treatAs. And what treatAs does is it creates that relationship between tables but does so virtually. And the way we do that here is calculate because we're going to be changing context and in this case the context is going to be with regard to the relationship. So we've got our total spot price and then we've got treat as we've got the the distinct to turn that column into a table and then um, we've got the year and week field which is our key that we created and then we've got that joined in a virtual way to date and to date week and year um, in the dates table. So now we've we've basically got that cross join table filtering the dates table in the same way that it did when we had a physical relationship, but without violating the star schema. And so what we can do here is we can take and drop that total spot price treat as into the into the matrix. And what we see is it's the exact same exact same totals and then if we if we we go down in the hierarchy and open up each of the years what we see is the same thing we've got we forced that 53rd week and a blank and then 2019 53rd week and a blank and then 2020 53rd week in the 203 so exact same results and we can even pop that open and compare and you can see that in the the straightaway total and then the the total using treat as we get the exact same results and so in this way we've done so without disrupting our data model and incurring any of the disadvantages that we talked about with relation to the snowflake schema so that is one technique that is quite useful for dealing with that week 53 problem. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about another problem that, that that week number and particularly that week 53 can cause and how to deal with that. So I hope you found that useful. Um, if you did, uh, please throw it a like. That always helps a lot. And um, as always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.